Let's look at five different ways you can use text to create interesting backgrounds in Photoshop. So I have my document set up here just with a basic player cutout, pretty awesome shot. I believe this was by Matthew Brooks of the Austin Soul. Evan Swiatek is our subject for today. So I've just typed out his name in small text. Just figured I'd throw some elements in so we have something to go on the backgrounds that we're gonna be playing with. So first up, I'm gonna make this big text background. So let's turn off the name for now. Let's go T for your type tool. I'm just gonna type out Swiatek and I'm gonna highlight that, hit return and just repeat that text a few times. Now Command T to transform it gonna blow it way up. We'll even have it going like off the page. And let's play with the line spacing a bit. So I'm gonna bring it closer together just by opening up my character panel and something like this. We can even type out one more on bottom. So we're fully filling up the screen. And I'm gonna alternate colors too. This is of course an optional step. All this tutorial is gonna do is just try to like spark ideas of ways you can use types. So there's no right or wrong way to do things. So let's go up to filter, convert for smart filters. And now we're gonna go to filter, distort, wave. So we're gonna create this wave effect. And you can play with these settings. I like to use a square wave cause that makes it like very sharp, jagged edges. And you can play with the amplitude and see how much you want it spaced out. You get a little preview of what it's doing here. But typically I've found like with a really high wavelength, both on the min and max, and then lower on the amplitude and generators, that seems to give kind of subtly interesting results. So let's go with something like this. And now I'm just gonna drag this over. You can even play with this more if you wanna like, you know, Command T to transform it, blow it up some more and see what that gives you. So this is giving us a fun background texture just by playing with the letters, chopping it up in an interesting way. And it doesn't really matter that it's not super readable. What matters is that it's like an effect that stems from the last name. It stems from like a reason rather than just like random shapes and lines. And we can always bring back his name. Maybe in this example, we put it like even on one of these lines. And maybe for this composition, we would move the cutout over into this corner. And just to give some extra flavor to this composition, I'm gonna add in a gradient going over the top of everything, just an adjustment layer. Let's make it a black to white gradient just to get some like super subtle lighting conditions. I'm gonna tweak the angle so the white is coming from the top right. And if we set this blend mode to overlay, I'm gonna decrease the opacity too. Just feels a little less flat that way. Moving on, we're gonna do another example of repeating text. So I'm gonna turn this one off for now. Let's make a new layer. I can turn the name off too. This time I'm gonna draw out a text box. So T for your type tool and then just click and drag. And again, we're gonna type out Evan Swiatek. And let's copy and paste this a bunch of times. So we have this name repeating. And then after you do a bunch, you can reselect all. Command A is a shortcut. Then Command C, Command V to copy and paste. And so we've got a bunch of those. Now we can play with it to maybe make it a little bit tighter, maybe more staggered if we play with this. I'm just gonna blow the whole thing up a bit more. And now from here, I mean, you might like this as a typography background. You can even like highlight parts of the name if you wanted to pick an Evan, make it blue, and then take a, a Swiatek somewhere else. Maybe down here, make that blue. This is kind of a, a fun feel. To take it a step further, I'm gonna do a text warp on this whole thing. So if you hit T, you get this like T with an arc underneath it icon at the top. We can choose any of these styles. I like flag. I think it's a really like trippy wavy look. Maybe we want it bending the other way. And I like this cause it's for this cutout, it's kind of like rising with the jumping action of the cutout. Something like this feels good. And we can add back that initial name as well. And looking more at this, you could also add this kind of like blurred focus effect. So if we turn this whole thing into a smart object, filter convert for smart filters, then we can go to filter blur gallery uh, field blur. And now this is going to allow us to pick a bunch of points and vary the amount of blur that they're all getting. So you can just start clicking your points and then tweaking how much of a blur effect 
is on them. And I'm gonna keep the ones that are near this blue text. So I'm gonna keep that like totally clear. Maybe we want it blurring back out in the corner. And this one we want clear. But something like this, I really like introducing field blur. It really gives some good variety to the image, makes it feel less flat, gives it more dimension and depth. You can play with other blur effects as well. If you go up to filter, blur, radial blur, I really like. You could do a zoom on this whole thing. And then if we wanted to like make sure that the, the blue parts were in focus, we could always click on our smart filter and then take B for your brush and shrink it down. And then we're just gonna basically mask out the parts that are in blue here as the areas we don't want the smart filter affecting. So that's another fun background you can play with. Now the next one we're gonna look at is a lot more simple. I think just blowing up a big number can be a really simple and effective way to just introduce like a clear focal point in the background. It almost becomes a primary element, but let's make a new layer. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just click once with your type tool and I'm gonna pick like a script font. First we can type out five Evans number. And I'm gonna do something like curvy. So a lot of these methods are just to like give the background a little bit of, of shape and, and intrigue. Allison's script is a good, good script kind of signature font. Let's make this blue. And then I'm gonna duplicate this same number with command J, blow it up real big. So it's off the page right now, but you can drag it around. And what we're doing is we're just like taking an existing element, blowing it up so we get that consistency throughout the graphic. And that way it feels like it, it fits. You know, we didn't just draw a random curve. We're using the exact curve that's from this five. And you can duplicate it again, maybe drag it over here. And this can also just be a really effective way to divide up the backgrounds. Like if you're making some kind of collage graphic, you might choose to make one image up here in the top left. Maybe one image is even masked out along the five, but you can do some pretty creative stuff. Next up, we're gonna do this really funky one that you can get with this polar coordinates filter. So let's make a new layer, T for your type tool. I'm gonna type out, let's do his initials. So let's go E, S, and I just wanna see like how we can pair them together. So let's separate these into two different layers. I'm just gonna Command J to copy that, Command V, paste that S. I'm gonna create like some sort of monogram continuous vibe. And I haven't done this with this font specifically, so we might need something thicker. Let's convert this for smart filters, both the E and the S. And then you can go up to filter, where is it? Distort polar coordinates. And yeah, let's see, we wanna do rectangular to polar. And I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, this is like, this can just be like a background texture you use. Like if you wanted something swoopy and fun in the background. This is a, a good way to create something like that. And you can always throw textures over it. You can throw a gradient map over it, change the colors. But let's see what happens if we do this with a different font. I'm thinking something bolder, maybe like Arial. I want something like rounded too. Dare we go Comic Sans for this example? I think we're doing it. Maybe a lowercase e. Yes, there, something like this. And right now I'm just inside the, the smart object. So I'm saving those changes and now it's gonna take effect in our composition. Okay, okay, Comic Sans. Cool swirly vibe in this example. And I don't like this little point that it's created. So I might just take a mask, put that on and then, you know, we can brush out just that part and make it smoother. Now, obviously this example doesn't create anything readable as far as text in your background goes, but it is a fun pattern, fun to play with, and it did, again, stem from some existing elements, that being the initials of our player. Last one we're gonna look at today is, again, using the initials, but we're gonna blow these up in a script font. I'm gonna use Nautica, Nautica Bold, and let's just type out the E. I found these script font monograms typically look Pretty cool when you blow them up. Uh, yes. And then again, just kind of trying to place it where it makes sense. So it looks like one continuous brush stroke. I mean, honestly, if you just saw this like swoopy pattern in the corner of the graphic or even by the name, you probably wouldn't think much of it, but I, I think it is cool when you take a closer look, you can realize it's letters. 
So let's blow this whole thing up and we're just gonna let these letters become our background. So something like this, and then I'll I'd probably move the name to the top left, although it, it works fine in the bottom left. And then I really like using that field blur in this situation too. So if we go to filter, convert for smart filters, one more time, filter, blur gallery, field blur. It's just a fun way to blur parts of this image and I don't know, again, just gives it dimension. It's it's really like, I, I think blur is such a valuable tool to use in really all compositions. So again, gives a nice abstract pattern, stems from the initials, and if you look closely, you can see them. And then like I was talking about before with the five example, like a way of splitting up your design is just by getting some abstract shapes going on. And you might as well use some shapes that are meaningful in this case, the letters, and like if we wanted to, we can mask out just this like left edge and place a photo of Evan Swiatek there. I don't know if I have a photo, but let's try this. I'm just taking my pen tool just for this example and roughly masking out just this, this leftmost edge all the way to the bottom. And then we'll come around, connect the dot back at the top. And now if you drag in a photo, let's see, what do I have? Let's take this one, drag it in, and then we're just gonna mask it to this shape. So now we're getting like a cool negative space composition with the right side being like cut out by his initials. Let's drag this underneath. And then you're still getting like this nice secondary image. And this one I'd probably blend in using luminosity or something to make it kind of take on the color of the background. Change this text to white. And I really like this as the start of a, an interesting design. Maybe we change the, the swoopy text to orange just for some variety. And you should experiment with other types of filters. Like I by no means have tried all of these. I really don't know a ton about filter gallery. It kind of intimidates me. Blur and distortion, those are kind of like my home bases and I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with those. I think you will be too. Doesn't always have to be a super dramatic effect, but there are a lot of subtle ways you can tweak big text, small text, whatever, to essentially make them become backgrounds. Hope this video was helpful. As always, let me know if you have any questions.